we will be joined by the Muzichuk sisters Anna and Maria Muzichuk and they along with team Ukraine won the gold medal at the Olympiad in Chennai in 2022. So it was a tremendous performance by them and uh, we want to talk to them. We want to know uh, about their story, about how they played and also it was a very, very solid performance by the entire team. Each one of them sort of contributed to the final victory of their team. So without any further delay, let me invite both of them on this stream. Hello, Anna. Hello, Maria. How are you? Hello. <laughs> Hello, Sagama. Nice to see you. Thank you so much for coming on stream and doing this. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't find time in Chennai to, to interview you. Uh, and uh, so I think that in Chennai, you are 24 hours busy. <laughs> we were playing the tournament as well. <laughs> yes, yes. And, and you guys achieved something truly special. You know, I was going through like the records and I got to know that since 2014, both of you have been playing for Team Ukraine and every year, both of you have been, have been on board one or two kind of, you know, uh, sort of interchanging and every year Ukraine has won a medal. True. Which is simply phenomenal. Like you guys, uh, both of you have contributed so much to, to Ukrainian chess and, and you know, to, to the country. Uh, yes, and of course we are very, very happy, very, very glad that uh, this time it was finally gold because earlier uh, we had uh, second places and third places, uh, but we, we really wanted to win and uh, I believe in 2018 we were really close to that. Mm. And it was just some unfortunate result of um, in the match of our uh, opponents because we won our last match and uh, yeah we were so much disappointed that we lost uh, uh, due to additional tie breaks uh but now i think uh, it was like uh, you know <laughs> some uh, fortune for us because i wouldn't say that we were like you know leading all the tournament and everything went smoothly it was rather uh quite uh, quite a lucky last round for us uh, for our team and also that uh, the team of our opponents and okay india lost <laughs> i am sorry to say that uh but uh yeah like everything played for us that day yeah, and I have to say that winning the Olympiad with the Ukrainian national team was one of my dreams. The point is that I uh, took the gold medal on my board in 2010 and in 2015, but of course it's not the same. So right now I can say that I have a full set of awards because I have the third, second and finally first place wow. at the Olympiad. Yeah, because because you have won the world championship. Now you have the gold medal at the Olympiad. Uh, Anna, you won world rapid, world blitz. So I guess everything that has to be won, the gold medals are there in the family, right? Yeah, true. And also in 2013, it is a very successful year for us because we won the world team championship and the world European team championship. Just so European team championship. <laughs> No, 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 it was twice, it was a world and yeah, European. world and European, but not world European together. Yeah, I just... Okay, that's <laughs> my turn. <laughs> right. I hope you understood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Amazing. <laughs> so that was a, a great, great performance. Um, and how happy are you uh, with your own play? Because if we look at uh, the performance here, so you scored six out of 10 Maria on top board and Anna you scored seven out of 10 Anna you also won the individual silver medal on on your board so so how happy are both of you with your own performance Oh, well, I have to say that playing on the first board is always very tough uh, because uh, the opponents are very strong. Uh, only the preparation lasts for two, three hours, and um, of course, it requires uh, responsibility. <laughs> but uh, uh, speaking about my overall result, uh, I 
can't say that it was an uh, amazing performance for me, but still, I think that I uh, showed quite a good play. Mm. I'm okay with it. And what about I think you're winning the last round was so very important. Uh, yeah. yeah, true. It was just a memorable result and also first for a memorable one for the team. I want it to go through that game important. against Alina Kashlinskaya because that was a very, very interesting game. So we'll go to it. But Anna, uh, what about you? I think you also scored very critical wins, which helped your team at critical moments in the tournament. Uh, yeah, in general, I scored like plus what, plus five? Mm -hmm. uh, or plus four, uh, no, seven out of ten plus four. Plus four. Uh, so it's like uh, quite a lot, but at the same time, you know, when you are one of the highest rated players in the in all the tournament, it's always um, uh, very difficult, uh, not even uh, to gain some points, but to maintain <laughs> on your on your level. So like losing two points is not a big deal, especially considering uh, the team success. <laughs> mm, mm, absolutely. And apart from uh, both of you, I think one more, I mean, all of your teammates did exceedingly well, but uh, one of them who did really well was uh, Anna Ushanina. I think she also got a medal on her board. What do you have to say about her uh, overall? Yes, I think... Uh both me and uh, Anna, we scored uh, quite many points and uh, in the beginning maybe it was a bit uh, more like uh, on my shoulders but then in the end uh, like all the last rounds uh, Anna won many important games many crucial ones and uh, her contribution to the overall success was uh, was really huge mm -hmm. and we also had uh, uh, the the other two players uh... Natalia Buxa and Osmak, Yulia Osmak. So this is Osmak and also uh, Natalia. I took this picture at the closing ceremony uh, and uh, I think they also sort of uh, played their role uh, in this gold and 7 out of 10 for Natalia and 3 out of 10 for uh, Yulia. Uh, yes, a good result for Natalia. For Yulia, unfortunately, as you can see, she didn't play uh, the second half of the tournament because uh, uh, our team captain decided that uh, the optimal uh, team uh, composition is, uh, is to play with the main squad. Uh, but, you know, it everything depends how uh, on your result, like how you finish. Mm. If uh, you end well, then it's like everything was okay, yeah. Right. But when something bad happens, then you start blaming everyone. So of course, um, in team uh, competitions, um, there can be situations when uh, one player, let's say, is not in the best form, and uh, it's not like uh, he or she is doing something wrong. It's just that uh, the tournament doesn't go well. Uh, but uh, well, uh, four of us uh, until the end, we, we kept on playing. And, yeah. Yeah, of course, it's impossible to become the champion, uh, to right. champions of the Olympia without the help of other teammates. And I'm very grateful to them. They did their best, and finally we did it. And and uh, uh, what about your trainer of the team, uh, Michael Brodsky? Uh, oh. How was his role and uh, was was it like uh, he has he been the coach several times of the team or was it the first time? No, he has been the coach since 2012 or even mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, many, so many, many yeah. years. <laughs> <laughs> so he, we know him, he knows uh, us and um, well, he's a grandmaster. I don't know if um, uh, to base India community knows much about him, uh, but he's a grandmother, uh, <laughs> grandmaster. <laughs> he's a grandmaster, uh, rated nearly 2550. Uh, and uh, so he was not only the team captain, but also he could help uh, team members with, uh, with the preparation. And we had one more coach, uh, um, Alexander Kochan. At the tournament, uh, but during the closing ceremony, uh, the organizers the organizers only award the team captains. Hmm. So wonderful! And here's a very nice picture. 
that is taken by I think uh, Shahid has taken this uh, and it is uh, oh. <laughs> it just shows the <laughs> amount of interest that was there and so many journalists you you being there Rishi Anand making the first move on your board how was the overall experience of this and also playing in India for you both of you you know regarding this picture um, I posted some videos and yes. some uh, <laughs> some pictures uh, in the very beginning of the tournament and I liked uh, that some people co commented uh, on them like a little bit of attention <laughs> just a little bit no it was it was really amazing uh, of course uh, playing on the top level you're kind of used to be under the cameras and so that the first move can be made by the celebrities and that uh, there was attention and a lot of media come but so much and so many people um, our team captain is somewhere, yeah, you can see him on the picture, but he's hardly standing, if you can, <laughs> you can see him. Yeah, he's, <laughs> oh after God. the game, he told us that uh, he felt like people are pushing and he's like, you know, jumping into the boards and he was afraid he would fall and then it would be catastrophic. <laughs> Um, but um, but uh, it was amazing, and uh, we would like to thank um, the organizers uh, and uh, everyone who contributed to organizing this event because there were many uh, many situations where uh, um, Indian people uh, really took a lot of care, and uh, and yeah, the hospitality we can just praise it. Amazing. And Maria, how was your experience playing in India? Yeah, in general it was good. I mean, I've heard many things about India. Some of them were good, others not so good. So I didn't know it was the first time for us. <laughs> no, but uh, everyone is uh, so happy to, to see both of you. And actually, I know for a fact that so many of you were very thrilled that both of you came to India. I, I'm sure you guys were at some point uh, sort of stopped by people around and uh, asked for pictures and autographs and so on. Yeah, right? it happened every day, you know, every single day. And also for the photos, I think it requests, so many requests. But, uh, but it's unique because uh, from our experience, and we have played Olympia since uh, 2004, and you, when was your first one? Uh, in 2010. In 2010, so already many Olympians. And, uh, you know, volunteers, they usually just care about um, organizing the things, yeah, like uh, they have to to guide people to some places, to provide the transportation, uh, some things in the hotel, and that's it. But here it was totally different. It looks like um, all, like literally all the volunteers knew about chess and uh, they all wanted to take some photos to take some photographs and this is so this is really good because you feel like it's needed and it's interesting and people uh, want to see more of chess so that's uh, that's what we are playing for right, right. Uh, and i spoke a bit with the volunteers uh, uh, and they told me uh, that there were ten thousand applications uh, out of which only 400 people were selected from all over India, but can you imagine 10,000? Yeah, <laughs> just something incredible. I, I'm sure that uh, some of the people also watched your streams and uh, got hooked to chess. So in the pandemic, and so yeah, yeah. One person told me one funny thing. He came to me and said, "You know, I started to be interested in chess just recently uh, from the online Indian league." Ah. And so they, they saw my performance where I had 100% score. And then, only then, I found out that you are also a world champion. And I am like, hmm, it's more important to win the Indian online league than to win the world championship. <laughs> no, no, I, I'm sure that so many fans of yours uh, were so, so excited to have both of you here. And also, I wanted to see a couple of your games uh, and a key moment from that. So uh, let me just uh, pull up the board here. And yeah, this one is no, first my game. Anna <laughs> versus uh, Mihaila Sandhu. And I think Anna, this was a very important win because it helped your team, I think, to equalize the score with Romania. 
otherwise you might have uh your team might have lost but when i watched when no, actually it, we were quite close to win but unfortunately yulia lost uh, the yes. last game uh, which she shouldn't have lost she just blundered uh, terribly in the end unfortunately hmm. but when i went through this game what i realized is that your opponent simply collapsed and i mean you won the game just very easily so what happened like uh, can you tell us like where was the mistake well i think there were already some inaccuracies earlier because this plan with the uh, queen d7 like a few moves earlier uh here the main move is knight to d4 and uh, there are many games with it like knight d4 yes, bishop yes. d4 it takes d4 knight d5 Mm, this uh, is the main line. Then, yeah, this is the main line. And queen d7, uh, I'm not a big fan of it. Because usually in the royal office, uh, you don't put the bishop on g4 uh, so often. Uh, because after h3, bishop h5, it's, uh, it's a bit um, misplaced. You know, everyone is yeah, scared of good. this pin. But no. I think it's not <laughs> yeah. so dangerous. And after knight d5, I believe white is already... But actually, I consider g4 here, and there are final lines after g4. Mm -hmm. Because it never makes sense. <laughs> no, but if you put like bishop g6, uh, knight h4, then the bishop is no, but I will take on g4. a bit out of the, Yeah, but there is, knight, <laughs> there is knight g4, a takes g4, queen g4, let's say king h2. Uh, no, king h2 is better because it's not okay. under, under the check after queen. And if queen f3, then uh, queen takes f3, bishop f3, and bishop d5. Oh, nice. nice. And it's not only that we are winning an exchange, but we are uh, maybe winning even more. Mm, uh, because so maybe the just knight can all, get all the pieces. Okay, here maybe c6, ah, c6. I'm not sure. Ah, okay. Yeah, but somehow all, all the black pieces are also misplaced. Mm -hmm. But then I thought that black uh, cannot, uh, can, uh, has another possibility instead of taking on f3 immediately, but also to move the rook somewhere, let's say rook c8, just uh, uh, oh, like this. And now I cannot move my knight from f3 because there is queen h4 check and I am losing my queen. Ah, right. Ooh. And I thought it's very bad, but uh, to my surprise, after the game, I checked the game a little bit, and uh, the computer evaluates it's like um, more or less equal position because after rook g1, then I give this knight, and there is some compensation. Mm -hmm. uh, so, okay, if bishop h6, g6, and taking the exchange, maybe it's not good, but some, you know, is a counterplay can, can be there like knight d5 no maybe not or this is bishop h6 uh, g6 knight d5 i don't remember how i got it rook g3 rook g1 sometimes and there is quite a strong compensation but okay in any case d4 was quite risky uh, because of all this and so, so I decided you chose some... this and then uh came g4 bishop g5 and i think now it's just one way thing right because now knight h4 then you got f4, I mean bd5 first, then f4, and you just ran over the position. No, Black's problem is that the bishop on g6 is out of play. Mm. It's like in this uh, famous... Uh, Capablanca winter where... game. But it was uh, with reverse color. There was right. the, the, the bishop on g3, and now it's the bishop on g6. So okay. basically, if we uh, start... Yeah, I think. Yeah, this Takes is correct, right? Time. So you you mean this bishop is now completely sort of dead? Uh, yeah, because all the pawns are are blocking it. Mm. Very nice. And I think you won a very very nice game here. And uh, I think in uh, your game, Maria, you you won against Alina Kashlinskaya. And I think that helped, helped the team win 3-1. Three, three, and uh, I think that was also a very, very important uh, win for the team. Because this was all theory. I, when I look through it, it is move 27. Till what point was it your preparation? 
Oh, well, Gary, I mean, you just mine. <laughs> Perhaps it was very unfortunate for you know, that she went uh, for it. So, uh, actually, everything was prepared until the 97 moves. So, this is all I've seen till here. There are 500 games. Then even taking here, there are 113, uh, around 100 games. Then even Long Castle has 90 games. And uh, I think she was also blitzing out or was she thinking? Yeah, she knew the line as well, but probably I knew it a bit further. I just remember that she played A5 and I'm pretty sure that she knew it. Mm, yes. Yeah, because you don't play A5 if you exactly. don't uh, know about it. Exactly. And then and the idea of a5 will be seen uh, in a few moves so okay king f8 check king G8. but here she started to stay but it is necessary to play very precisely i think here is a decisive mistake yeah king, king yeah, g8 is a decisive mistake king g7 is correct but king g8 is a mistake but it's very difficult to know right did you understand during the game that this is already an error by her Yes, true. I knew, I knew that after Queen 7 it was winning, but still, you know, it's not so easy when you know that you are winning, but still it's necessary to make the precise moves. So let's say I did just enough to make one move aside and it's already equal, you know, and it's um, such and, and a pity. <laughs> So a lot of pressure. Yes, it's so much of pressure. And the morning round, at 10 o'clock exactly. in the morning, we had to start. <laughs> yeah, yeah maybe you explain the difference between King J7 and King J8. Yeah, the difference is that uh, if King J7, then Queen J7, Queen uh, Queen seven if we do the same. And Black has uh, the most C5, Rook A6. Yes, C5. Ooh. King J7 is C5 King. the only move. King A1, right? And rook a6. And with the king on g8, there is rook d8 check, but now there is no check on him. Wow, what an important yeah, point. I just knew that it would be very hard for black to find all this over the board, and I repeated this line, I think, with everyone who played French. <laughs> so as you understand, I repeated them maybe 10 times, maybe 20 times before the game, and finally it worked. And I'm so happy that it worked in the very important game. Yeah, you sometimes prepare some line alone at home and you're like, oh, why do I have to prepare so much? But then when you win the gold medal, you're like, okay, it was all worth it. <laughs> yeah, the Lila, you know, she plays many openings and she's very good uh, at uh, the theory. So it was, uh, it was my day. Fantastic. And guys, I have to ask you, where, where are you right now? Like, are you in Ukraine or where are you? No, we are we are in Spain uh, because uh, it's uh, <clears throat> it's difficult to stay uh, in our home. It's uh, very often there are sirens uh, and it's uh, it can be at night, it can be at daytime. Uh, you never know, and also it's difficult to travel uh, as all the airports are closed. So the situation is is very, is very sad. And all of our team members had to leave our homes. Uh, we are in Spain, other, other girls are in, in other countries. And, uh, but all our family, uh, like our parents, grandparents, uh, most of our relatives are in Ukraine. So we are, we are staying in touch with them while we are here and uh, we are preparing for our next tournaments. It must have been so, so difficult for both of you to win this event, like even just coming to India and playing. Uh, and I think you guys must have gone through so much uh, tough period. So I think uh, winning this medal, dedicating it to the country, I think it would mean a lot, right, for both of you. Yeah, of course, it was very important win for us, but it's also the win for, for Ukraine and uh, for Ukrainian uh, citizens and for all the uh, people who, who defend our country. Tremendous. And it looks I just... like we won it against everything. <laughs> Sorry? It looks like we won it against everything exactly. because our conditions are very bad. Exactly. I think in this, with everything that has happened, your team winning the gold medal is maybe one of the biggest achievements in the chess world. 
uh, and to have such mental strength is not at all easy. Also, uh, I just want to tell our viewers that uh, there is a book that is written called From Ukraine with Love for Chess and it is available. Yes. At, uh, I got it recently. <laughs> Yes, and it's available on New in Chess and whoever buys this, there is a contribution by both. Oh, okay, it's here. Yeah. And, and whoever gets this book, all the contribution from this will go to uh, the charities that are working for Ukrainian uh, in, in Ukraine. So please do get it. It's it's actually has a lot of chess material, right? To best games of you, Ivanchuk, both of you, Ivanchuk, Ponomario, many others, right? Yes, I am uh, glad that it was actually the initiative of Ruslan Ponomario. He did a lot. Uh, he was uh, the author. He was uh, contacting all the grandmasters. He was collecting all the games, then passing them to New in Chess. And uh, he did really a lot. And um, I think almost all, um, well, uh, strong players, uh, all strong players, grandmasters. Uh, we annotated some of our best games, uh, and this book is both uh, available in uh, in a paper format and also in an online format. So there are uh, there are two ways to to buy it, and uh, those who are interested, you may check it on New in Chess uh, on Amazon uh, and. Uh, where else? And there was uh, some third source. Or I don't one remember chess, which. Maybe, right? Uh, well, perhaps. Uh, yeah, but on it. on Amazon, but, yeah, on and, Amazon and New in Chess. And in New in Chess uh, for sure. And uh, having a, an opportunity, I would like to thank New in Chess uh, yes. for for accepting this idea, and uh, they agreed to publish it for free. Wonderful. Anna, Maria, both of you are heroes. You both are amazing. You can see the chat. It's filled with hearts right now for both of you as always. And uh, we wish you good luck. I think the FIDE Women's Grand Prix might start. Maybe you guys are participating in it perhaps and uh, many more events. Yes. Uh, we don't play the first event, which starts in September. Uh, so, but we will play a uh, European Club Cup. And uh, we will play candidates yes, in October. Of course, candidates is going to be both of you would be playing there. So best wishes for that. And in case we and uh, we will play in India. <laughs> yes, if if chess super league happens the second edition and if it fits in with your dates, it would be wonderful to have you both again playing there. No, but I meant we are going to play uh, Tata still India. Oh, you come. Oh, you're coming in Kolkata. Yes. And that is happening in tw uh, 29th of November to 4th of November. December. And uh, Tata Steel has a parallel, like two events, uh, open, like men event and women, and both have equal price fund. And we are going to see both of you coming there. So <laughs> it's going to be so exciting. I think once again, you guys will be mobbed over there and, you know, for pictures and autographs. And we can't wait to have you in India. Yes, we are right in front. So thank you so much, uh, both of you and uh, Maria and Anna for joining us. Thank you, Samir. Thank you so much for this interview. Thanks for inviting us. Have a nice stream and uh, thanks for your support to India. It's, it's great. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Bye.